fellas, we're halfway through the year. We made it. And I think this year has been pretty good for video games. You guys don't, because you guys complain about everything. But I actually think things have been pretty good. I would like to take a look back at the last six months and see how we're doing this year. So, last year, I put this together. This is the games in 2021 uh, alignment chart. So, what we're going to do is take this format and apply it to 2022. These are all the games that have come out in 2022 so far. And this is every game that's come out in 2022, except for Mario, but we'll get to that in a second. Also, uh, I played Earthbound and Yoshi Story this year. Also, Guacamelee and Def Jam Fight for New York. So that's on the list, too. Yeah, Five Nights is from last year, but I didn't get to rank it. Same with Mario Party. All right, let's start off big. Pokemon Arceus. Now, when this first came out, I, along with many others, thought this was amazing. First Pokemon game in a very long time to actually grip me. But was it really that good? Or was it just the gimmick of the open world with Pokemon in it? In terms of popularity, it's clearly up here. But were we just bamboozled? This streamer says, no. <laughs> I think it was a good game. I thought it actually was pretty good. I think a big part of it is that brain tickling where you like check off all the things on the Pokemon and you're like, oh my God, I got the, I have to watch Bingle, I, Beezel, Beweasel. I have to watch Beweasel do a uh, water move 10 times and then I get to write him down, right? And I, I think that that kind of tricks people into thinking they're having fun. Much like only one here says that you know, big upbeat music does. But I think it's about there. I think Pokemon was pretty good. I don't think it was amazing. In fact, I might move it down a little bit because I didn't actually beat it. It was kind of tedious. And let's also not forget, this is only good in relation to the other Pokemon games that have come out recently. Most profitable franchise in history, by the way. And this is the best they could do. Kind of tedious, kind of boring, but it was still good. They pulled off open world. Fine. Good. Rogue Legacy 2... Is definitely more niche, but not as niche as you would think. It's good, but it's basic. What even is that? It's a, uh, it's a roguelike, roguelite. People get mad at you if you mess that up. It's a really good, uh, sort of hack and slash style rogue thing. Kind of like Spelunky, but with more emphasis on combat and platforming. It's a sequel that did everything good. It's fine. It's exactly what you think it's going to be. Horizon, I... <laughs> I don't even think I can rank this accurately because I played it for a week and then Elden Ring came out and I feel so bad. I bought that fucking game for $70. It's sitting in my PlayStation 5 because I haven't bought another PlayStation game for $75. There are no PlayStation games, but it feels like the same as the other one, which makes it good. I think it's good and I think it's popular. I think it's up here. Sony exclusives are tough because Sony exclusives are like, are they popular? And actually, it didn't iterate that much on the first one, so I'm going to put it here. Technical Marvel looks amazing, plays fun. It's... I got to put it there. Blood Hunt, I only played for a little bit. It is good. It is niche, although it is getting bigger. I don't know how to rank this because it's just a team MOBA. I just only really got into a little bit before all this new string of games came out, and now I'm on Roller Champions, <laughs> which I will not be ranking as I am sponsored by them, and I can't give an unbiased review, of course. Not really on MOBA, I guess. It's third-person shooter. It's good, though. Multiverses came out. I think it is a very strong start. I don't know about you guys. I was shocked by the relative lack of interest. It felt like it kind of... Uh, things kind of were quieter than I thought. It's a beta. I don't really care yet. Is that how people feel about it? Is that what you guys feel about it? Honestly, because it's, it's a closed alpha or people just not interested. If I can't play it, why should I throw my attention to it? So you can like see it before it comes out and see if you want to. Okay. I have, I have content creator brain. I think I, I might have YouTube brain and I can't look at this objectively. I just see it and I'm like, why won't people watch this? <laughs> I feel like it's not as mainstream as I thought it would be. It is good, though. It's well made. I'll put it, like, here. I hope that it continues to get bigger and better. The Battle Pass idea is really cool, so, you know, not bad. Guacamelee is such a niche franchise, I think. Meme game? Yeah, kind of. I feel like there are some indie games that, like, transcend, right? Everybody knows about Hollow Knight. It's a good game, but it's also, again, it feels kind of similar to the other ones, so I don't know. Let's do Kirby. It was good. Kind of simple though, right? 
kind of simple, kind of easy, kind of for babies. Definitely better than these, definitely more popular. Was multiverses better? No. <laughs> no. We gotta, oh my god, we gotta shift everything. We gotta shift it all. And it's definitely less popular than Pokemon. Pokemon go up. Like here, right? This is like a, this is like a solid seven. I feel like the Kirby game didn't like blow anybody's mind. It was just a good Kirby game. And by the way, Nintendo is killing that. Nintendo is, is destroying at the like, here's the game you wanted. You ask for it and you get it and it's good and it's fine. But it doesn't blow you away. Which is probably why they're holding on to Breath of the Wild. Because they want that to blow people away. And right now they're in like 7 out of 10 mode. Because they're making so much money. So it was good. I'll put it like here. Why not? Fine. I'll do this one quick. I'm almost done with the game. This game's good. It's not amazing. It's just good fun gunplay. It's down here. Nobody's heard of this fucking game. I looked for a walkthrough to see how far I was in the game. I couldn't find one. They were all from like October 2020. Nobody knows what this game is. I put it on here because I played it this year and I needed to pad out the numbers. I liked it. It's fun. I don't even know what it is. It's a really cool like old shooter FPS kind of thing. It's good. It's good. Sifu. I always want to say seafood. Sifu came out early in the year. I thought it was amazing when I first played it. Now I'm like, okay, it's not bad. I said that Sufu is like a, it's not even a 7, it's like a perfect 8 out of 10. It is the quintessential 8 out of 10 game, and I wish this game came out every month. Probably more niche than both of these. Sifu was pretty big, was it? I think you are lie champion. XQC played it? Does it? He has to fill up 16 hours a day of live streaming. Of course he played it. For sure bigger than Rogue Legacy? You think so? Hold on. Oh. Uh-huh. Well, perhaps I have misjudged. <laughs> Let's go ahead and move these down a bit. I thought Sifu wasn't huge. Whoops. Mario Party. Uh, I think when this game came out, everybody was like, Oh my god, this is exactly what I wanted. It's Mario Party, but it's online, and the online's pretty good, and blah, blah, blah. But it's like four boards. I feel like people give Nintendo so much credit for putting out a game we wanted 10 years ago. I, I mean, I like it. It's, it's probably up here. It just feels very mid. Is Mario Party bigger than Kirby? I don't think so, right? Kirby's got to be bigger. It definitely is. Uh, that's it. You, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to have to do it. You're making me bust out the logic and research. Time to look at the facts. Kirby could be anything, by the way. There are a lot of things named Kirby. <laughs> blown the fuck out you have one day you had one day were you up by three submit to kirby what about overall what do you oh because it passed all yeah let's look at overall hold on 2004 to present get fucked up mario party isn't shit from 2004 kirby series wait Okay, Kirby still clears. <laughs> Kirby wins. Kirby's b definitely bigger. Eat shit. Did Mario Party have target balls? That's what I thought. That's true. They ended a new shit for Mario Party. My target didn't have target balls, dude. I was so sad. Yeah, no, it's... Kirby wins. Okay, this one might get a little contentious. Let's have the Earthbound conversation. Okay, we can all agree. Right, it's down here. Is it good? The thing is, I did beat it to completion. I beat the whole game, and I enjoyed myself the whole way through. However, that was with heavy use of the Nintendo Switch's rewind feature. Without the rewind, this shit's bad. Without the rewind, this game is a fucking chore. And I hate to do it. Useless clarification? No, it's useful. It's useful, trust me. Earthbound without rewind is like down here. It's just not great. Earthbound with rewind is like here. Earthbound is a, is a fantastic experience that a lot of people should play. It's very unique and different. And it's just charming and fun. But is it better than Kirby? Yeah. I think I put it there. I think I put it there. I do. I love Earthbound. It's a great game. Is it this hipster? No, it's up here now. 
Didn't used to be. I think this is a good spot for it. Because the average gamer doesn't, or the average person doesn't know what the fuck Earthbound is. Most people don't know what Sifu is either. But, you know, maybe they read it in a magazine or heard about a game. It's, it's definitely more niche. Earthbound is, is gamer core. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. You know, we have the Kirby problem again. Really, the Pokemon problem. Was it a good game? Well, what do you mean by good? Objectively speaking, it's probably like... Here? Because if you think of this like a preteen amnesia, I think it's pretty good at that. But I... I'm going to push it up a bit. Because I think this game was creative as shit. With the gameplay elements, it's not. With the gameplay elements, it's not, it, you know, it's, it's stay away from the bad guys. If they see you, they run after you, whatever. But the world was actually really neat. And it was really well realized. I'm gonna give it more points because of legitimately how ambitious it was. I think that's, that, that deserves some points. So I'll put it like right there. Coney, will you play the DLC though? Maybe, I don't know. Depends. It tried something new. Of course, it wasn't great. But, you know, they tried something, and kids have the ability to now play a, a shitty Outlast, right? What about all the bugs, though? I don't care about bugs. I love bugs in every game. But again, you got, I, got, I have content brain, right? If a bug happens in my game, we all get to laugh about it and have fun. If a bug happens in your game, you get to be sad alone in your room. You have to reflect on all the time that you wasted. I get to be like, huh? And maybe get a clip out of it. I might make money from the bug. I think I think security breach is rated. Oh, I forgot this is going on YouTube. Also, while we're here, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's, it only takes a second. Just go below the stream and hit the red button, silly. Did I say below the stream? Below the video, whatever. You know what I meant. Five Nights pretty good. Five Nights goes there. Def Jam Fight for New York. How do you even rank this? I mean, it's niche, right? I'll put it like here. Is it better than Arceus? Kind of. I actually think it is. That's that's actually insane. Probably like here. Because let's also not forget, this is a game... Let's not go too hard on the content. This is a game from the PS2. But it was well made and it was fun. It was good. Let's get some games out of the way. Mario Strikers, this is not out yet. As of me recording this video... Hey, I'm gonna update this on Sunday. So, I'll update this based on my first impressions, but right now, I don't know. As of right now, here, I think. I played, they had the online demo thing, and I played for 30 minutes, and I, I just didn't have fun. I stopped playing. But, I don't know. The game's not out yet. It's getting pretty good reviews. We'll see. The quarry is actually getting crazy reviews. I'm leaving this dead center. I have no idea. This one makes no sense to me. I don't, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what this is. I don't know what to think about this game because people are saying that it's good. I don't believe them. I think they're lying. This makes no sense. So there we go. I forgot to rank Yoshi's story. <laughs> okay, objectively not great. Pretty mainstream, right? You forgot to beat it first. We'll beat it tonight. How about that? I'm gonna load it up and we're gonna beat it together. It sold the same as Earthbound. Yoshi Story? Okay, well, but it's Yoshi. <laughs> Come on, it's Yoshi. I'll put it here. Now, I am delighted to reveal to all of you this year's truest internet darling. That's right, I've been holding off on ranking a certain game. It is the most bottom right game that exists. Vampire Survivors is a $3 Steam game that I am still playing a lot, <laughs> and I should stop. The dev updates it like once every two weeks or something and adds new achievements. It's, it, it's, it's literally just a fucking mobile game, but it's fucking good. How many people are playing it now? Hold on. Oh, shit. No, what? 77K? Influencers do work. There's a very funny Asmund gold clip. Hold on. POV, you start having kids. Do it again. <laughs> this is bit right. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. 
Food again. Food again. Food again. Food. Money. 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 <laughs> oh, I don't know why I love this clip so much. It's just something about the desperation. Food again. Food again. 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 <laughs> I had to keep feeding this fucking kid. How does it keep eating? Oh, it's a great clip. What the hell is all this? This is Vampire Survivors. It's a very fun game. I think it goes down here. I guess it is more popular, but it's not more popular than Earthbound. It's hard because it's big in online spaces. 77k people at, at one time when it came out. That's insane, dude. But it's bigger than these two. So actually, I got to do this. I'll move these down. And move this up. There. Last thing to rank. Elden Ring. Hard top right. That's what I would have thought. Up until a certain point in the game. Elden Ring makes an extremely strong first impression. It really has that magical feeling that you don't get from many games now. And it's still good for like... 20 hours, 25 hours. However, it has the biggest drop off in quality of a game I maybe have ever seen. Elden Ring at a certain point drops off a fucking cliff. It seemed like they got lazy with the balancing. The same bosses and, and different characters are reused over and over. Elden Ring is a really hard thing to rank because if it stayed this good throughout, it would be like boom. It's the most successful game in the Dark Souls franchise for, like, ever. It's over here if it stayed that good throughout. But Elden Ring just falls on its fucking face. And the issue is that it made even the cool fights like Horalu. Like, I didn't even care about it. I wanted to be done with the fucking game. I was so annoyed. I wasn't having fun anymore. And it sucks. I did beat the game very easily and I didn't even die once. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. Elden Ring is like first 80% of the game is like up here. However, I think personally like here. I'm not kidding. Dude, if I played a Souls game that was like the last fifth of Elden Ring, I would stop. If I played The Surge or any of that other bullshit, if I played that shit and I had to fight Malekith, I would have turned it off. That Malekith fight is dog shit. And the issue with Elden Ring is that it's so hard if you make it hard. But then if you want to make it easy and you just want to jump in R2, it gets too easy. There's nothing in the middle. I could just jump in R2 and stagger everybody. Or I contrary. just don't. I'm not being a contrarian. I said it's a good game, as you can see. I just have an opinion that differs from your own, and you can't handle it, so you have to give me $5 to, to, to feel better? I don't know why you gave me $5. Thank you for the $5. I don't think this is a, a controversial opinion. I really don't. I've heard a few people talk about this. The issue that I have with Elden Ring is the first game in the Soul series where I didn't beat a boss because it, I was like, this is dumb. What was your build? Dex Int. De I just went Dex in. And it wasn't because it was good. I just liked the prisoner's helmet. And it turned out to be a good build. So, who didn't you beat? <laughs> okay. Before you guys try to revoke my gamer card, okay? I have played Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne, and Sekiro. I have enjoyed them all to varying degrees. I think Demon Souls is still kind of shitty. But it's a prototype, right? I've beaten every boss in all those games. Except one, actually. I did not kill Priscilla. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> I did not beat Priscilla, the cat lady, because she was nice. She said, just leave. And I was like, okay. And I just left. I don't think it would be a stretch to say I would have killed her. Hardest fight, by the way, I've ever done was Calamy. Fuck that guy. I, Calamy is the hardest fight I've ever had in Souls. I don't know why. Elden Ring is the first Souls game where I I I have been fighting a boss, and I'm like, this is fucking dumb. There is a point where you go from... The whole tough but fair, you know, you're gonna prepare to die bullshit into, like, getting over it with Bennett Foddy. You're going into meme territory. And that's how I felt about Millennium. I just... What the fuck are you doing? If she didn't have a second phase, maybe. But I just don't know what they... I, I get the idea is, like, the biggest challenge you can have. And it's optional. 
So by the way, I'm not actually holding it against the game. I'm just bringing this up from my personal experience. I'm, I'm not even holding it against the game because it's totally optional. You could do it if or not. But it does represent this weird idea. I think she's like the culmination of the issue that is in Elden Ring, where they're designing bosses designed to, to, to be fucking impossible. It doesn't flow with the game. The way that you play it, it feels like you're in a Dark Souls shell, but you're fighting Bloodborne bosses. And that's not an original thought. I mean, I had it independently, but I know a lot of other people have said it. But that's how I'm feeling when I play the game. And they give you so much stuff to make it easier, whether it's summons, or jumping R2s, or whatever the fuck. But it all just kind of cheapens the experience, because I can just make a mimic tier myself and then not play the game. People beat the bitch naked with a pot on their head. Okay, yeah. That's cool. How long did it take them to do that? The ability to do something doesn't mean that it's not bullshit or hard. People do 72-hour runs of Animal Crossing. It takes a week. Like, what do you, that doesn't mean that it makes it any less bullshit. Spill the beans, what weapons we're using late game? Moonflare? I had the tail of the star guy. By the way, what a fucking, what a waste, dude. They had that star guy. That Estelle was one of the coolest fights. It was annoying and it was kind of bullshit, but not in a broken way. It just like, it, it felt fair. And then he shows up again? That made me so sad. It ruined all the happiness. And all the excitement. I don't know. It really cheapens it a bit. It doesn't feel special. I know that they had to, like, pad out the game a little bit. I think it's a different design philosophy, and I don't think it's bad. I genuinely think it's just a difference in how they want to build and craft the game. And I don't think it's bad. I don't begrudge it. That's why the first 80% is amazing. But that last 20%, everything after the fire giant, not good. It sounds like it's not that you didn't enjoy the last 20% of the game, even if some of the bosses weren't good. I think you didn't like the late game exploration. I agree with that. No, I, it's not even about the exploration. It's a bunch of things adding up. Let me put it this way. If the last 20% story-wise banged, I wouldn't even care about the reused assets. I really wouldn't. If the last few fights were, were killers. Really. Because it would feel, it would still feel so unique and different, and it would feel whole. But it's the lack of meaningful exploration added with the fact that the last few bosses are really just over the top. And this is it. These are the games this year. We're done. And it's their problem now. Now they have to deal with it. Can't wait to see the replies on this one. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, like the video. If not, then you make one. You do better. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Say bye. Bye, YouTube. Goodbye. Earthbound Twitter is going to go crazy. Whatever. They realize their little niche Japanese RPG is, is silly. It's a silly game.